From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind cling to your flesh, as if it will not decay and fail you. One day the crude biomass that you call the temple will wither, and you will beg my kind to save you. this game it completely blew me away i went in completely blind and uh it was not what i expected at all i was expecting something similar to inquisitor you know like a, a diablo like dungeon crawler but what i encountered was something that reminded me more of playing DD &D than a grind fuel tactic slash the game immediately reminded me of final fantasy tactics fire emblem or advanced wars it wasn't a hack and slash at all, but a tactical RPG. And it made me really glad to go into this game blind because there have been many pleasant surprises. And when the Adeptus Mechanicus started talking in Technolingua, I knew this game was the real deal. Also referred to as Lingua Techna in universe, it's a form of binary machine code emitted through cybernetics that can't be spoken or understood by ordinary humans. You have to be cybernetically augmented to speak it, or understand it for that matter. And instead of going the lazy route, the game developers included the real deal in the game. You take control of the specific faction of the Adeptus Mechanicus of Mars, though you can change the color scheme to various Mechanicus factions. Canon story-wise, it's Mars though. At the opening cutscene, you're introduced to a servo skull that isn't quite an ordinary servo skull, but the digital consciousness of a former tech priest named Redicus. With the discovery of Vox feeds from a missing Mechanicus explorer, Magos Dominus Faustinius requisitions a team to investigate the mystery upon the Necron tomb world of Tenebris to discover what happened and pursue the salvage of lost ancient technologies for the Mechanicus. See, this faction of the Imperium has a religious quest for knowledge that engulfs all aspects of their existence, such mysteries and technology that can be found exploring them, and that's basically what these cyborgs are all about. After a rocky, somewhat damaging journey through the warp, the void ship cased this Metallican, or at least I think that's how it's pronounced, orbits around the Necron world, burying our heroes and the armies of Skatari who served them. Well, I take that back, actually. There are no heroes in 40k other than the Salamander's chapter of Space Marines. But as the journey begins, the player is introduced to a wide range of fascinating characters from the Mechanicus, such as Magos Faustinius, the guy in charge. However, there is a whole bunch of unique Mechanicus characters. The case of this Metallican is filled with the most advanced technology in the Imperium. These types of ships are easily some of the most powerful and rare in the galaxy, outfitted with all the manufacturing needs that any hive city would be capable of. The Adeptus Mechanicus has everything that they need and more to achieve their mission. The only thing they're short on is time, because once the Necrons awake fully, the jig is up. And despite their technology and forces, it would be near suicide to actually confront the tomb world's sleeping horde of warriors. Black Library veteran Ben Counter writes the story. And as a lover of Black Library novels, I could feel the game's authenticity to 40K almost immediately. So the story is amazing and very, very Warhammer 40,000. Though I gotta admit that non-40k fans might find it kind of confusing. The story mostly plays out through text with uh, each quest giver. 
unique in personality and goals. However, the tale plays out in in-game cutscenes as well. The game has an expansion called Heretic 2, and it includes a whole new series of levels to fight with uh, traitors aboard the ship. The expansion is okay and mixes up the tactical complexity of the gameplay by uh, not fighting Necrons, but I think overall it doesn't really add or take away anything from the game. In fact, I didn't even know that it was part of an expansion when I was playing through my first playthrough, because it just seems like another person giving missions. Voice acting. The voice acting is perfect. Even though the majority is binary of a techno lingua, so gotta read. But it pretty much fits the vibe of 40k like a glove. I will build of your home star. The Necrons are okay. I mean, I would have liked to see like a, a more alien take on how they talk, but it's still cool, I guess. And the Necrons really do like to talk. Talk shit. but I actually like that. I can't really figure out what's off to me about the Necron voice acting, but I think it could be better. To me, it just seems like guys with deep voices edited to have a box effect. But then again, I don't really even know what I expect. Maybe just more alien sounding, I guess. After all, the Necrons are the oldest alien race in the galaxy, pretty much. Well, they're one of them, but you get my point. So I would have expected them to not talk perfect English. Our design. The art design in this game is exquisite. You can tell that the art department are either true 40k fans or went above and beyond to get the grim darkness of the far future just right. Since it's Mechanicus, I'm happy they gave it some cyberpunk flair and the gritty sci-fi Dark Ages vibe is very welcome. Whoever drew up the tech priests knew what they were doing, and it all captures the Mechanicus perfectly. However, as you gain more tech priests and customize them, the visuals all kind of blend together. I had a hard time visually telling my tech priests apart as I progressed, which can kind of be a problem in a tactical RPG and a problem that I've never come across before, but it's there. In any case, though, the art design is fantastic. Music. The real standout achievement in this game is the music, or the entire everything concerning sound effects, ambience, or just the sound design overall, to be honest. The rhythmic electronica hypnotizes me and all the while over the grimdark choir vibe that 40K is known for. I love this soundtrack more so than I can express vocally. And as battle heats up and things get more tense, so does the techno cyberpunk, which really gets you in the mood to slay some Xenos filth. The music even like kinda haunted me like outside of the game. I kept on thinking about it and playing it in my head. So that means it's pretty good. And if you do get the game, I suggest getting the soundtrack as well. Basics. Early on, I had kind of a rough time. Well, that is past the tutorial, I mean. And until I realized I could use line of sight to block enemy attacks, I was playing kind of dumb. My first go-to was an ability called Zealous Metals, which was uh, basically every round it gave you plus one HP and seemed kind of super useful at the game's start because I don't know why I had difficulty in the learning curve. I found it challenging. The game's overall not the most challenging in any way, but um, I upgraded to the healing abilities off the bat. With actually both my starting tech priests, I did that, which was pretty dumb and uh, made my first playthrough really hard. The builds on my first playthrough were just, they were just horrible. And uh, 
I don't look up other reviews or guides and go in blind for my reviews. So it took a bit for me to figure stuff out. In my second playthrough, I didn't even utilize any healing abilities from the talent trees at all. So I gotta say, it was all extremely gratifying to figure out what works and what doesn't. This was half the fun for me. Figuring out what is optimal in loadouts and uh, upgrades is extremely rewarding in Mechanicus. Oh nice, I got a new thingamajig. I enjoy also how the gameplay is split up into three parts. Your void ship, where you level up characters and customize your gear. And then there's the holographic tomb layout representing your warriors in the field. And then there's the combat map itself when it's time to fight. The only resource to level up your tech priests is Blackstone. So I need a lot of it. Going out of the way to achieve all the secondary stuff in missions for extra Blackstone became an obsession. However, the thing I need most is cognition. You can't do anything in this game without cognition. The critical factor concerning Necron's battle prowess is the reanimation protocols, which depend on your decisions during dungeon crawls and can be as early as a single turn in some cases. How fast these Necrons reanimate makes the battle much more challenging and frustrating, but frustrating in a good way. I mean, in the lower and on the tabletop, the Necrons are supposed to be the hardest faction to kill, um, other than Death Guard, but they're basically made of living metal that heals itself like any ordinary human wound heals, only a million times faster. Customization. Upon the main hub on the uh, Metallican, you can upgrade your tech priests utilizing Blackstone. Like I said, my first build was pretty bad. Like early 5th edition Dark Eldar Codex bad before the update. The healing abilities from my first playthrough turned out to be a total waste. It took me forever to realize how useful some abilities are, like Cognition Freedom, that essentially gives a free action in battle. When I first read it, I kind of thought it wasn't very useful, just like whatever, but the reality couldn't be further from that. Also with all the trees of uh, abilities to go down, I pretty much came to the conclusion that only two are top tier once you get a couple of useful ones. I just got the first upgrades that are good from uh, various skill trees, then mostly ignored them afterward. The only ones I found good as all-rounders and always good are the Dominus tree and the Explorator, one shooty and one tanky. Those two were basically all I used from that point on. But once I got the abilities down the tree, like completely, I did have fun messing around with the other ability trees. However, those two are the only ones I needed after some experience from my first playthrough. I wasted a ton of frustration on underperforming builds the first time around, and it was really fun to figure out just how horrible I was. Level design. The level design in Mechanicus is pretty good for the most part. The mission layouts on the hollow map and the battle map are auto-generated and random during every single playthrough. At the central hub, it's time to choose what mission to do. Each one has various rewards, and before a drop, you decide what you're going to bring to battle. You can choose which Skitari troops are going to support you, or which canticles you're going to use. Choosing what to bring is key to victory. However, I found that only five of the canticles were really optimal and just ignored the plethora of others through both my playthroughs. Most just seemed kind of irrelevant. And on the hologram map, the holo map, when the mission is sent out, Redicus and the other tech priest leader people, I'm assuming, are just kind of like standing there watching the player or something like that. They're going to be guiding us through the crypt and pop in for story beats. And here you can see Redicus just watching the Skatari and the Tech Priests. The holographic map part of the missions is pretty interesting and kind of reminds me of D&D campaigns I've played, and at times, just as frustrating. There is the diamond that represents a battle. Exclamation marks that represent things of interest that will either help or screw you over randomly. 
And then there are glyphs that will also help you or screw you over randomly. As you explore the crypt, based on your decisions or other stuff, the Necrons will become more and more aware of your vile scum human presence. This is represented in the top left by the crypt icon representing the tomb's awake level and the green bars increase depending on how much you've managed to alert the Necrons. The glyphs are kind of confusing, but if you choose one that's beneficial a couple of times, from that point on, when you hover your mouse over a glyph that's useful, it gives it a little highlight. A little story window pops up with some lore that might be a hint as to what glyph to pick. I'm not sure, but I mean, it just seems pretty random to me, I gotta be honest. I never really figured out a pattern that worked or was consistent. So I just kind of accepted that it was a coin flip of benefits or detriment with little in the way of consistent outcomes. If I didn't feel like gambling, then just walking past is an option. But where's the fun in that? Gotta get that loot after all. But then again, you don't want to wake up every Necron in the tomb because it makes the fights more difficult. Eventually, I came to the conclusion that you just have to have a healthy balance between the two. So you don't got to go to every single little thing in the tomb. I decided to just go out for the ones that are like on the way to the fight. And it worked out pretty well from there. Many crypts are straightforward, though this mixes up as you get farther along in progression. The battle maps can get pretty abstract, with some having traps or other gimmicks. In some of them, the only option for victory is to keep moving and utilize line of sight blocking terrain in the crypt to survive. I learned pretty quick that if you can avoid being targeted, then you can't be damaged. It seems obvious, but it took me a second to figure out. And you also see all these little tricks that aren't really in the tutorial or anything like that. Like when you select a unit and you go to move it, it shows blue colored squares in yellow. The blue is where I can move my tech priest without spending a cognition. The yellow will cost a cognition. Also, if you look closely, you can see a little gun icon on the square of enemies. This indicates that if you move your tech priest to that spot, then you have line of sight to fire on that enemy. It means that that enemy is in range to shoot at, which is a, a, a very clever way that lets me know that I will be able to fire on that unit if I move there. Pretty ingenious. The core gameplay of Mechanicus is all about generating cognition. Without it, you get a base single shot, and that's about it. To heal, attack, buff, etc., you're going to need a lot of this stuff. On the levels, there's usually cognition stations that refill after every turn, and a tech priest gets all the cognition by standing right next to it. I didn't know it for the first half of my original playthrough, but you can actually send a servo skull to go grab you a cognition point. I'm sure it's explained somewhere, but I just didn't get it for some reason. However, when I did figure it out, it was incredibly helpful. But you can get cognition other ways too, such as standing next to a defeated opponent or abilities that unlock you generating one at the, at the beginning of like every turn and whatnot. In any case, this is the bread and butter needed to perform actions in combat. The game slowly teaches you that uh, sticking your nose out too far is a good way to get wrecked. And the game teaches you things like this pretty organically, such as eventually realizing that you should only move as far as you have to, or only move where you can utilize cover for firing. A quick study of the battleground helped in analyzing my path and what direction was the best way to go. Often I just pushed in one direction and wiped everything out with all my forces that was in that direction, which seemed to work well. This tactic kept the rest of the enemy's guns off my tech priests. And if there's some line of sight blockers, I found I can really pick off the enemy as I saw fit. Death by a thousand cuts. Some enemies are of a much higher priority than others, and it was clutch to me to weed them out quickly. Such as the Triarch Praetorians. 
they're not the most deadly enemy, but they will attack any tech priests that are on their own or low on health. And they got rocket feet, so they can drop in wherever they want. The moment I had a weak tech priest and left it out in the open, they used the opportunity every time to kick him while he was down. I really like how the game softly pushes you towards experimentation. I like how the game makes me switch up the strategy I gotta use to keep me on my toes. And it really keeps Mechanicus from getting stale all the way through and into more playthroughs such as learning how to correctly position units in movement so they don't get in the way or block other troops, or how you, you really gotta be careful with your Skatari and Servitors, or they won't be around very long. Ordinary soldiers are squishy and get one shot a lot, or two shot it often, so you can't really leave them alone or out in the open and have to position them right to utilize them to their full potential at least. So, I don't really have too many gripes with Mechanicus, though there is some bad when concerning this game. First off, there's definitely some glitches in there, and uh, like at one point I had a, a Skatari just running in place for forever, and he made the running animation sound effects the entire time, and it was really annoying. There's also this weird screen bounce that would go away if you just turn the camera, among other glitches I came across, but there aren't too many, and they're never, never game-breaking. However, you will notice them. Also, I wish that there was more in-game story outside of the little text boxes. Not full-blown cutscenes, but I, I don't know, something. The binary language of the Adeptus Mechanicus is terrific, so I'm not griping about that. I just wish that there was a little bit more effort into visual storytelling, and not have the story relegated to just like little chat boxes in-game which as the game progressed seemed less and less compelling to me. And there definitely should have been more Redicus. Redicus is awesome, but he's really not in it as much as he should be. The difficulty is actually a gripe for me as well because, I mean, I did say in this review that I had some challenge early on. And yeah, I did have challenge and frustration. However, once you figure things out and kind of get in the groove and you get your own optimal settings and, uh, you know, just kind of figure everything out, the challenge spikes go away to the point where eventually you're just kind of godly and the only way that you can lose is by playing carelessly. So I wish that the challenge was a little bit more cutthroat. The first playthrough is challenging though in an enjoyable way. The customization, too, after a playthrough seems kind of simplistic, with many of the skill trees outright irrelevant. You just dip into the first skill of a handful of trees, and then you only have to go down two from there to be far more efficient than any of the others. And keep in mind as well with the bad stuff of this game, because there's very little. I'm really grasping at straws and nitpicking. Not good. There's a lot of good stuff to say about Mechanicus. No matter how difficult the game gets early on, you always have the tools you need to succeed. The game forces you to think of new strategies and be creative to get past the obstacles that it puts before you. Mechanicus is going to be a highly enjoyable game by anyone who likes strategy games. Excellently consistent gameplay. Great sound effects and sound design all together. The music is amazing and the grim dark aesthetic is spot on. That really inspires the 40K vibe. And the art department performed flawlessly just as the Omnisaya demands. Highly customizable progression with tons of items, gear and upgrades. The versatile nature in which your tech priests grow as the game progresses is delightful. There are so many variables, it's impossible to get bored. And trying to collect all the possible loot is <laughs> a futile cause, but still fun. Mechanicus also has infinite replayability. The levels spawn randomly and are different every time. The gameplay is addictive and just gets more and more addictive the deeper you get. And with so many options on what to do and how to do it, this game basically demands repeated playthroughs. And indeed, my second playthrough was far more enjoyable, though by the end I was godly and 
beat the last boss without pretty much any effort at all, but it was still fun getting there. If you're a fan of the Adeptus Mechanicus, this is going to be one of your favorite games ever. This game really belongs in every single 40k fan's library, no exceptions. Seven out of ten. A great game worthy of any servant of the Omnisaya. So pick it up right away. Just don't give in to the temptation to research forbidden technology and become a filthy heretic. Or you may have to be purified in flame in the name of the God Emperor. Thank you.